Big Ten Commissioner Jim Delaney has now come out officially and said he's in favor of an eight-team playoff. I think this is inevitable. I think it's a good move for college football. And I think the questions immediately become seismic if this is potentially going to happen. Among them, I was told years ago, and I think it's not a coincidence that this story is starting to per- percolate up right now, that all of the advertising contracts had been signed for six years, not for 12 years. All right, ESPN signed a 12-year agreement to carry the college football playoff. But I was told that the marketing and advertising sales associated with that deal were only signed with all the big sponsors for six years. And that at that point in time, they anticipated somebody would come back to them obviously wanting more money but also potentially opening up the concept of the college football playoff after six years. I believe if I am not mistaken, you guys can correct me, we are about to enter the fifth year of the college football playoff. And if that is so, that would mean next year is the sixth year and we could have a window of a couple of years nearly here where we could talk about what the playoffs should look like going forward. So, I'm in favor of eight teams. I've been in favor of eight teams since the get-go. I'd be perfectly comfortable letting the college football playoff committee select the eight best teams in America and letting them all roll it out, play the semifinals uh, two weeks after the title games. I'm not a big fan of the title games. All right, let me just go on the record as that. You guys know it. I think title games make no sense primarily because you're playing them with divisions which I think are nonsensical. Why should you discriminate against a college football playoff predicated on a, uh, on a divisional system that makes no sense? There's no reason why Ohio State should play Northwestern. There was no reason why Clemson should play Pittsburgh. There was no reason why simple quirks of geography should dictate which two teams should play for a conference championship. I would eliminate all divisions And if you insist on playing a conference championship, I would take the top two teams, have them play it out. However, I don't think that's necessary if you have an eight-team playoff. I don't think you gain that much. But if you do, if you do desire to do it, I think you play the round of eight, second week of December. That way you have two weeks to recover after the conference title games. Then you, in the middle of December, when nothing else is going on and everybody's sitting around twiddling their thumbs, waiting, you go ahead and play the four semifinal games and then you roll right in to the to four quarterfinal games, sorry. Then you roll right into the semifinal. Then you play the championship game as it's presently constituted. I think that's the right number of teams. I think it's the right setup. One would play eight. Two would play seven. Three would play six. Four would play five. One, two, three, and four would all host home playoff games. This year, that would mean that Alabama would host a home playoff game. That would mean that Clemson would host a home playoff game. That would mean... That, uh, that in the third spot, Notre Dame would, and in the fourth spot, Oklahoma would. You would bring in a lot of revenue to all those different towns. You would give the season ticket holders and the individual schools the rights to sell tickets for a playoff game. And I think it would be a phenomenal setup for the college football fan in general. You could play that entire weekend. You could play a game on Friday. You could play two or three on Saturday. Or you could go Friday one, Saturday two, Monday night, another one. Whatever way you wanted to structure it, I think it could be awesome. You could also go Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Monday. Thursday, Friday, two on Saturday. I think it would be an incredible success story and I think a lot of people would love it. All right? So I think it makes total sense. I think eight is the right number. I think that if you're not inside the top eight, it's hard to argue. You deserve to play for the championship and I think it could happen. The Big Ten, why are they in favor of it? Well, more money but also because they haven't made the playoff in the last two years. And in fact, the Big Ten has not scored a point in the playoff since Ohio State and Urban Meyer won it in year one. So, how would I structure this going forward and what would it look like? I think there are a lot of interesting questions here. Right now, ESPN pays around $600 million-ish. I think it's like six oh eight million for the college football playoff every year. Theoretically, And that's for three games, right? One versus four, two versus three, and then the championship. That's three games. Theoretically, you're over doubling the amount of games that would be available in the college football playoff from three to seven, okay? So if you went from three to seven, I would think that package at a minimum goes to $1.2 billion or more per year. If they really wanted to make it happen in college football, the way they would justify it is they would say the money that we're going to make from the expanded college football is going to go to provide a stipend for many more college athletes across the entire scope of the country 
and that way it would be really hard to fight against because you're providing something to those players in excess of what they would otherwise receive. Um, so, would ESPN be able to afford it? I think is an intriguing question. Because Monday Night Football is coming up. They pay $2 billion for that now. They would theoretically have to pay more money for that. I think there's a possibility. I don't know, the, I don't know that this would happen. I think there's a possibility that multiple different uh, television networks could get involved in hosting the college football playoff and that ESPN could allow that auction to take place where they get the final three but potentially NBC has one playoff game. Fox has one playoff game. Uh, maybe CBS gets a playoff game. If everybody wanted to sit at the table, it could look a lot like the NFL. How does that benefit college football? Well, much like college, the NFL, when everybody has got playoff games. Right now in the NFL, NBC has playoff games. Uh, ABC slash ESPN has a playoff game. Fox has playoff games. And CBS has playoff games. And then one of those three networks, AB, uh, sorry, CBS, NBC, or Fox, rotates around and gets to host the Super Bowl every third year. If that were to happen, in theory, with a new uh, alignment for college football, then that would be extraordinary. Now, maybe ESPN wants to take all the money that they are already spending on the college football playoff and instead of bidding out a massive amount to continue with the NFL, maybe they just want to go all in on college football. Maybe they want to buy more Big Ten rights. Maybe they're sitting out and they say, you know what? We want to get the SEC game of the week and control all the SEC's television package. Maybe that's what the ESPN decides to do. It's a little bit of game theory to figure out how to allocate your resources to buy everything. But I do think that there is a lot of demand for big time major events in the world now. You have to have events that cut through the noise, right? What is happening is we're seeing a superstar effect in the world of sports. Things that everybody wants to watch, things that everybody has to see, it's not just sports, it's also entertainment, are attaining a tremendous amount of value. The cream is rising to the top, the superstar effect. I saw something on this that I was going to show you guys that I thought was intriguing outside of the world of, uh, of sports. I snagged a picture of this. This was from the Wall Street Journal the other day. Uh, where do all of the top songs come from in Billboard now? Can you guys see this stat? Back in the day, the stat in the 1960s is from uh, the Beatles. If you see this stat, it's kind of hard to see. That It's a number of songs in the Hot 100 by the week's most popular artist over time. And if you look, the way this is skewed, the side closest to me where I'm pointing right here is Modern Era. Look at all of these right here. The other side is the last 50 years. That's the Beatles. For a long time, all we had was the Beatles and there were a lot of smaller big time stars that would get on the Billboard list. Now, if you're going to make a top song in America, there's so much competition that the superstar impact dictates that the superstar gets all the attention. And so, for instance, Drake, every song that Drake is connected to now because of his distribution network immediately becomes a hot Billboard 100 hit whether he's associated with it whether he's on it all of these stars are creating their own ability to distribute their content Taylor Swift can go out Beyonce they can say hey come buy my new album and if you become a superstar there is a superstar effect why am I tying that into sports? because those people cut through the noise it's harder than ever to become relevant but once you become relevant it's easier than ever to become massive and the college football playoff is that for sports. If you look, there's a reason why everybody else is going longer form and deciding to have a longer playoff because most people don't pay attention to the regular season. They come in for the playoff race. Look at the NBA. Look at the NHL. They're never ending postseasons. Uh, the NBA has 30 franchises right now. They play 82 games to eliminate 14 teams. Hockey does something similar. 16 of their 30 teams advance to the playoffs. The NFL, it's hard to make the playoff but they still take 12 of 32. Major League Baseball has expanded the playoff. That has in general created a lot more interest in their sport. The people who argued against a playoff because they said it would hurt the overall regular season look like imbeciles now there's never been anything better for the interest of college football than a four-team playoff. I feel like the same would be true for an eight-team playoff.